Welcome back to Live Darts TV. We're at the Winter Gardens for the Bet Victor World Match Play, and we've got a very special guest with us, legends of the sport, John Gwynn. John, thanks for joining us. Uh, always nice to join anybody or anything at the World Match Play in Blackpool because it's a very special competition and um, uh, for me and for everybody else. But for me in particular because uh, it was the second tournament that was broadcast on Sky Sports the first being the first World Championship at uh, the Circus Tavern. And Dave Lanning and I were the commentators for that. Uh, but when we came to Blackpool a few months later, Sid Waddell joined us, so he made his debut here. We were way up in the gods, me, Sid and Dave, on, at 1994. And I remember it so, so clear, clearly when Larry Butler won the uh, tournament and Bob Anderson was within a millimetre of getting the nine data, so it's strange that another Anderson has done it this time round. Um, and so Blackpool's very special because it was also Sid's last one, you know, his last full tournament. Uh, he was taken ill while he was here and uh, we never saw the best of him again after that. He did come and do, although he was in a very poorly condition, the first Premier League game of the 2012 season. Uh, in Manchester, the first game up was Phil Taylor and Adrian Lewis and they brought Sid over from Leeds just to do that very first game with me. I've got a picture of it at home and, uh, and he never worked again after that. So this place is always special for so many reasons. I was going to say, we're sat here now and just looking up, it is just an iconic venue of sport, not just arts. I think anyone recognises this place and associates it with the World Match Play. Well, I'm also very keen on politics, you know. Uh, my son is actually a Member of Parliament and in the Shadow Cabinet, uh, Andrew Gwynn. Um, and uh, I, I'm very much into politics, although I'm not an activist. And, of course, this stage has been uh, the home of many, many party conferences in days gone by. I can remember Harold Wilson, I can remember uh, Harold Macmillan and all the other leaders of the various parties on that stage and that's a kind of sport if you like politics but yes you're right it, it is synonymous with but it will always be synonymous particularly with the world match play next year is the 25th anniversary uh, it'll be the 26th staging of it and I think that'll be very special and you've got this sort of neo-gothic uh, surrounding which which I think always gives it that little touch of class and when you get the quality of play, yes, the audience is limited to whatever it is, two and a half, maybe 3,000, I don't know, with them all standing up. On that, it probably is nearer 3,000 now. Uh, and once upon a time, that was all you needed. But I don't think the world match play could ever leave this place. Uh, there would have to be a very, very sound reason for it to do so. And uh, it will always it will always be very very special. And the world match play belongs here, and and and, and here belongs to the world match play. As I say, this this week in particular, we're going to have a new name on the trophy. We're in uncharted waters. There's no Michael. There's no Phil. There's no James left um, in the competition. So again, it's a new era for the world match play as well. It keeps reinventing itself. I think that's right. I think that that's absolutely right. And I think it's not just for the world match play. I think it's for darts in general. Um, I, I will have seen, it's almost for me, the third generation of players coming through. I mean, obviously I was around when when the split took place and we had, and before it indeed, when we had the John Lowe's and Eric Bristow's and Jockey Wilson's, Bob Anderson's, Bobby George, and all those were the heroes of the day. Uh, don't let me leave out Cliff Lazarenko and Alan Evans and people like that, legends, Leighton Rees. Then the next generation came along, Phil Taylor, Dennis Priestley, although he was a little bit older, Dennis Priestley came on the scene, obviously Raymond Van Barnevelt, who was then still with the BDO, but eventually came here. They came along and became the second generation, and now we've seen Phil retire, we've seen uh, the others' powers diminished, if I can put it that way, still good players, people like Barney, Obviously, still good players, but we've also seen the emergence of players, and for me anyway, the third generation, and uh, the next 
five, six, seven years, we'll see them come on and take over. That's not to say that the likes of Michael Van Gerwen, of course, who's part of it in a way, he's just a few years ahead of the others, uh, will not uh, flourish still, and he will. And There are some excellent players on, on the circuit, and emerging players, and it's so, so exciting. And I think that this week in Blackpool has emphasised that. It's emphasised it. Two cracking semi-finals today. First up, we've got Peter Wright um, playing Mensa Sulovic, and then we've got Gary Anderson against the surprise package of the week and young um, Jeffrey Deswan. Thoughts on both games? Well, first of all, I've got to say that uh, I first saw Mencia Suljevic 10 years ago, just over 10 years ago, in the World Championships for the first time. I think he was. I think he made his debut at the Ali Pali. I could be wrong, but I think it was 2008. And I was amazed at his quality uh, with, with the kind of throw that he has. Uh, it's certainly uh, different to everyone else's. Uh, but I was amazed at the quality and I thought, well, he can't sustain this, obviously. It's nice to see a player like this come along, but he's not going to be around for too long. And here he is 10 years plus later in the semi-finals of the World Match Play and I've got to admire him. He, he's a wonderful character, great for the game um, and he has his own idiosyncratic way of going about business and it, it's lovely that uh, so many players are different. So I'm, I'm pleased for him that he's advanced so far. He's had a good couple of years, hasn't he? Um, he's up against a man who seems now to be coming back out of uh, slumber, uh, relative slumber anyway, by his standards, Peter Wright. And uh, I would be very surprised if Mencia quite has enough to uh, defeat Peter Wright uh, in current mood. And... Um, uh, I think it's going to be tight, it's going to be close, but I think Wright might might take it, what, um, it's first to 33 tonight, so I would say 17, 11, 17, 12, maybe 17, 13. Second, second semi-final, we've got a young man that just seems to have ice running through his veins. Well, I go back to 1996, and, and, and I'm not doing that for the sake of uh, longevity and, and illustrating my own uh, length of time in the game. I'm going back that because he reminds me of Peter Everson the year he won it. He thrashed Taylor 8-1 and nobody did that in those days. Nobody did that. Uh, but everybody thought, well, that's, that's your night. Now you've got to come up. And he was second favourite just about every round that he played in. I think there was one round when he played Sean Downs where he was the favourite. Every other round he was second favourite, even in the final, obviously, against Dennis Priestley. And uh, he won it. And I see in Geoffrey Desvan exactly the same. Incidentally, uh, it shouldn't surprise people what he's done because he knocked Michael Van Gerwen out of the UK Open, didn't he, earlier in the year. And he's uh, come through a very tough uh, uh, Q school back in January. That alone is, uh, is an achievement, you know. Um, I like his demeanour, I like his coolness, I like his measured throw, he doesn't seem to fl get flustered, although I know inwardly he does, he's nervous, but he's controlling it well. I like the lad, and I think the lad is not here just for the match play, I think he's here to stay, and I think he's part of that third generation that I'm talking of, of, of players in my time in darts, the third generation that's going to entertain us over the next 10, 15, maybe 20 years when I'll be well in my 90s. But, um, uh, so I hope I see his full career. But, um, uh, yeah, he's up against Gary Anderson, who's a great friend of mine. I've done lots of exhibitions with Gary's great company. Love him to bits. And so one part of me is saying, yes, come on, Gary, you've never won this tournament, this is your chance. And the other part of me is saying, Geoffrey uh, Desvan, you deserve it. You've beaten some very, very good players here. And certainly if he does beat Gary Anderson, then I think he's uh, got every chance of winning it. Uh, I still think in the end, and I remember saying this, 96, about Peter Everson, I don't think this is the end of the road. I was wrong then, and I'm possibly going to be wrong tonight. But I just think Anderson will get through. It might be uh, 
within the 33 legs, 17, 14, 17, 15, it might go beyond. It might go to something like 19, 17. And uh, we'll see. Whatever. It's a game. I'm not actually working on that game. I'm working on the first game for Talksport 2. But I'll sit back up there in the players' uh, lounge and sit and enjoy that. Just sit and enjoy it because it is going to be a fantastic game. I'd say if Gary were to go on and win the whole world match play, he'd join a very exclusive club of people to win the Worlds, the Premier League and the world match play, which not many have done. No, obviously the World Championship is the big one. The world match play is the biggest tournament involving match play, which is the definition of legs only, as against set play. And uh, so he'll have won the two big ones. I still think he's got to add the other world, which is the World Grand Prix. I maintain those are the three big world titles. The Premier League, though, is important, of course, because it's for the elite. And if you are the elite of the elite, then uh, there's no better accolade. And uh, so, yes, he, 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 that's a fantastic one. Uh, if he does win this, I would hope that he would then go on and add the World Grand Prix, if not this year, at some stage before he retires. And he keeps reminding me uh, that he isn't going to go on for uh, ever. He's not going to go on for too much longer. Uh, but time will tell. But Gary's a great lad, great dart player, and an ambassador for this sport that um, the sector no. Before we wrap this up, if I could get one memory that sticks in your mind about the world match play in the Winter Gardens, what would it be? <laughs> Funnily enough, <laughs> it was in 2004, and we had four games in the afternoon, four games in the evening, second round games. And in the afternoon, we played 84 legs in the first three games. And the fourth game on was Jamie Harvey and Roland Shulton. And Roland, uh, Jamie beat Roland 19-17. They kept, kept hitting each other with big checkouts. One, two, ones, one, three, fives. Just when one looked as if he was going to win it. And we didn't get the crowd out of this place until 6-20 for the afternoon session when really they should have been coming in and filling up for the evening session and I think the uh, implementation, what was it, two three years ago, whenever it was of the, yes you've got to win by two clear legs but at a certain point, five legs after the uh, finishing point if you like, or five legs into extra time, it's sudden death, I think that had to come and it really should have happened in 2005 after that because it was amazing. That I do remember that and so many other wonderful, wonderful memories working with great commentators, a great team in the skybox and um, the players and it, it is just one wonderful experience that, uh, that, that is so dear to me and nobody can take it away. John, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for joining us here at Live Darts. Love talking to you. Could speak all day, but I say I know you've got to get on to to get ready with Talk Sport too. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Anytime you want to talk to me, I'll talk to you. Thank you, John.